In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a procedural displacement mesh object using Geometry Script in Unreal Engine 5.0. So I've already created the blueprint actor and the variables we're going to need for this process. So the first thing I'm going to do is, gra is drag in the source mesh variable and get the source mesh. This is a static mesh asset variable that's an input, public input to this uh, procedure. So I'm going to right click, convert to validated get, and then off the is valid pin, I'm going to copy mesh from static mesh. So I'm going to wire my target mesh in there to the two dynamic mesh and the source mesh asset to the from static mesh asset. So I hook up the exec pin. Now if I compile this and I drag one of those to the level, it's going to be empty. But if I switch to modeling mode, let's say let's make uh, a sphere and let's just make a torus too. We're going to use that later. So uh, now if I go back to my displacement blueprint, I have to select it in the tree over here and I drag the sphere into the source mesh slot, you see it updates to be the source mesh. If I drag the torus in there, it becomes the torus. So that's the copy operation. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply tessellation to this. So off the dynamic mesh, I'm going to drag a apply PN tessellation node. And that's only going to do that on success of the copy. So if the copy failed for some reason, we wouldn't tessellate. And I've got the subdivisions over here. I'm going to drag that into the tessellation variable. So now if I go back here, maybe let's use the torus again. We zoom in and we see if I can increase the tessellations and you see the torus gets rounder. Let's set that back to zero. Okay, now we're going to get the displacement map, which is a texture 2D asset. Get displacement map, right click, convert to validated get. We're going to wire that up here if it's valid. We're going to apply displacement from texture map. That's That node is going to take the target mesh and the displacement map. Uh, the option struct here, we can drag off a pin to create a new option struct, but you can also right click and say split struct pin, and then you can just wire things in directly. So I'm just going to wire in the magnitude, uh, which is the sort of height of the displacement. I'm going to compile that. And then I'm just going to put a recompute normals node off of here because uh, this displace node doesn't automatically recompute the normals. So if we compile that and go back, we see it still looks the same. But if I drag this stones map in there, you see it's being displaced now. And if I increase the tessellation, we start to get more and more of the detail. You can go quite high here, actually. Um, and I can drag uh, say a different map in there too. So now I have a procedural displacement object uh, and so basically I could use things like the convert tool to bake this out into a fixed static mesh when I'm happy. Oh, I dragged it in and made a material out of it. Um, so the only thing you'll notice here is it's kind of chunky when I drag it around. That's because it's quite expensive to recompute the dis this displacement map. Um, so uh, it's, it works okay if I change the settings over here, but if I actually want it in the scene, it's expensive to move around. So what we can do is we can basically disable this blueprint uh, from recomputing when we're happy, and I'll show you how to do that. So that's what this be frozen parameter is for. So I'm going to drag it in, get the frozen value, make a branch node off of that. Okay, and then I'm going to shortcut here. And so I'm only going to apply this, this whole blueprint if frozen is false, which is the default. Um, so now we can compile and run. The only problem is when we do that, so if we check frozen, it's going to disappear. So why did that happen? Because the rebuild generated mesh event clears the mesh before it runs the blueprint. So we have to do two things to change that behavior. The first thing we have to do is select the blueprint itself, go to the dynamic mesh actor section, and uncheck reset on rebuild. So what that's going to do is it's not going to clear the mesh each time the script runs. Now the problem is, when we're not frozen, that means we're going to copy this mesh each time and accumulate the mesh over and over. So what we want to do is add a reset node before we uh, do the rest of this. So I'm going to just move this over a little bit more. Um, and the target mesh, I'm going to basically pull off and there's just the reset function that clears the mesh. So the false wire is up here now. And then that we do that reset and then we pass that target in to the two dynamic mesh here. So now if we compile this, so it's still slow, but if we freeze it, 
now it's fast and it's not being recomputed. So if we go and change these parameters, nothing will happen until we change the frozen setting. If we put this back to zero, it'll stay until we unfreeze it and then it'll recompute. Uh, okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.